Chris Graham here for Trailblazer RV with a new RV orientation on this Axis 27.7 motorhome. Uh, so we're going to start right here at the front of the motorhome, work all the way around the outside. I'll show you where everything is and how everything works. Then we'll move inside and go through uh, some of the appliances and where to find some of the things inside. Um, starting uh, right here under the hood. Uh, to release the hood of the motorhome, uh, open up these two latches, which I've already done. You have two sets of keys with the motorhome. Only one of the keys has the hood release key on it. Um, so uh, make sure not to lose that one. To open the hood, just uh, lift up like so. It'll, it'll uh, stay open by itself. There's not a lot of room in here and there's not a lot of maintenance that you're going to do uh, on your own. Uh, but there are a couple of key uh, maintenance areas that I like to point out. Uh, windshield washer uh, reservoir uh, is uh, down here near the bottom. You've also got an oil dipstick uh, labeled in yellow uh, up here near the top. Um, your battery, should you ever need to access it, is actually a little bit difficult to access in behind here underneath these hoses. Uh, you can kind of see the red uh, positive battery terminal there. Um, should you need to boost the motorhome ever, uh, you can use the emergency start feature from inside to use the uh, RV batteries to boost the engine start battery. We'll show you how to do that when we get inside. This motorhome also has a uh, small solar charging system installed specifically for the engine start battery. So it's unlikely that you'll run into low battery issues, uh, but that's where the battery is if you ever need to access it. Really, that's all of the, uh, that's all of the owner serviced components underneath the hood. Uh, anything else, you're gonna want to uh, bring it to an RV dealer or a uh, heavy truck dealer for service. Around the side, we've got some baggage doors. This front baggage door has some notable, uh, notable things in it, um, some electrical uh, areas. You've got a small uh, fuse block here. Uh, if you uh, need to search for uh, fuses, this is a good place to start. Um, more importantly though, above that is your slide out control. This is for your forward slide. You've got two slides, so you'll have two of these. Uh, and should you ever have a problem with your slide out, if, you're, if you can't get your slide out to come in, there's a way to man put this in a manual override mode uh, by pressing uh, this black button six times and holding it down on the seventh. There's instructions for that uh, here. You don't have to remember that. Uh, and then that will bypass basically the board, all of the safety features of the slide. Uh, and only power the electric motors. So then you can use the slide switch uh, in the coach to power the slide in. At that time though, you would have to uh, bring it to the RV dealer, us, uh, to have that slide looked at. We've got one uh, here for the forward slide and in one of these rear compartments for the rear slide. Compartment right behind that is your propane system. Uh, so it's an onboard ASME propane tank. This needs to be filled by somebody who's certified to fill propane tanks. It's full now, um, and when you arrive at the uh, fuel station, the uh, propane technician will fill it from here. Uh, make sure when you go to use it that you open the propane valve um, for, the, uh, for the propane to work. And you do have a... Uh, a propane uh, gauge here. Uh, this is an electronic gauge, so you'll be able to measure propane uh, level from inside on your monitor panel as well. You've also got a propane quick connect uh, to hook up outside appliances to. That's on the other side. I'll show you when we get there. This one is just a uh, basic storage compartment. Uh, one thing to point out in all of these storage compartments are little LED lights. Um, they're really handy to have in the storage compartment, but you will want to uh, ensure that you turn these off uh, before you close the compartment. Um, that's one of the uh, common complaints we get uh, from people when their batteries are going dead quickly. They don't even realize it, but they've got all of their lights on in their storage compartments. Uh, it's easy to forget about that. 
This one here is the generator. So it's an Onan 4,000 watt gas powered generator. It works off the RV's fuel tank and uh, the fuel pickup line for the generator only goes down to a quarter tank of fuel. So once you have below a quarter tank of fuel in the motorhome, you won't be able to start the generator. That's deliberate so that you can't accidentally run yourself out of fuel by running the generator. You can open up the uh, generator compartment here to access a couple of things but there's not very much in here uh, that you're ever going to need to do. There's a remote generator start inside that we'll show you when we get inside. You can start the generator from here, um, similar switch to what's inside. So to start the generator, press and hold the stop prime button until the light comes on. Then you can press and hold the start button. If that doesn't start up right away, do the same thing. Stop and hold the stop prime button. And then the start button. We'll shut that down so that you can hear me. Uh, once you start up that generator, uh, it'll take uh, it'll take 10 or 15 seconds before the automatic transfer switch kicks in and actually powers up your uh, 110 volt appliances. That's just so that you know you've got nice clean power coming from the generator. Uh, the only other things in here to know about, you can uh, check and fill oil from here and drain oil from right below. And there's also a tiny little uh, 30 amp circuit breaker hiding uh, around the side of the switch here. If you ever uh, have started up your generator but you have no power, uh, you can check this circuit breaker. Right here is your power uh, connection for the RV. So it's 30 amp. You get a, a power cord stored right here uh, that just attaches onto the side of the RV here. The other side plugs into the 30 amp uh, power hookups. And we also supply the 15 amp park adapter to plug it into a normal residential 15 amp outlet and cable TV inlet here. Uh, so if you're staying in a park with park cable, you can hook up right there. This is your hot water on demand system. Uh, so you can access the outside of the hot water system from here. Again, there's not very much that you need to do here. Um, there's an on off switch that we've left in the on position and you have a little 12 volt fuse here. Um, so if it's not working, uh, you can check this fuse, uh, but uh, otherwise uh, not really any maintenance that needs to happen out here aside from periodically cleaning or dusting. Uh, with the on-demand hot water systems, if you're, if you're one to do your own winterizing, uh, they do uh, have bypass kits on them. You can bypass this if you like. We don't rec recommend that. We recommend running antifreeze right through the uh, hot water system. It takes very little moisture to freeze and damage this. Uh, so we recommend just running that, uh, that RV uh, plumbing antifreeze right through the system. Right here, uh, you've got another storage compartment. This is where your second slide control is, uh, or your second slide uh, circuit board is for the uh, slide in the rear. This is that 30 amp power cord uh, that I was talking about. Um, you've also got in here your sewer hose. It's a 20 foot medium heavy duty sewer hose. Uh, this is basically a one season sewer hose. It'll get you through this year. When you upgrade this, uh, this is one component of an RV that's worth spending the little extra money to get the, uh, the upgraded version. Um, and uh, I'll show you where to uh, dump your sewer um, in a minute when I get a key because it's locked up right now. Uh, another thing in here though that's worth noting is you've got an access panel uh, that we've pulled off here and you've got access in here to your uh, automatic transfer switch uh, if you ever need to service it and to your water pump uh, via the uh, uh, siphon line here uh, if you're if you're going to do your own winterizing 
that's where you can hook into the water pump to uh, pump antifreeze through the, R through the uh, RV's plumbing system. Uh, right here is where you'll uh, fuel up. Um, don't ever confuse uh, this one with this one. Uh, this is for gasoline. This is for fresh water. Uh, so this is to uh, fill the fresh water reservoir, um, ideally with one of those uh, white drinking water specific hoses, uh, just so that you don't get that plasticky taste in your water. You can also hook up directly to city water connections if you're staying at a site with pressurized water. So you can hook your hose, that same white drinking water hose, right up to here. We recommend using a water pressure regulator if you're hooking into city water. Just a little brass fitting about that big that goes on the end of your hose just to uh, ensure that you don't over pressurize the water lines in the RV. That could lead to a uh, water leak situation. Um, and underneath here, you can see where you'll hook up that sewer hose. Uh, right to the uh, right to the termination here the valves the black and gray valves are inside here so we'll come back to that when I've got a key then you also have an outside shower here uh, pretty simple operation of the shower it's got hot and cold water and a uh, handheld shower head it extends up to about that height um, don't forget to winterize this it's a component that's commonly forgotten about in the winterizing process here at the back, you've got your trailer hitch. Uh, it's a common two inch square hitch receiver and with uh, seven pole trailer wiring, seven pole and four pole trailer wiring. Um, there is no uh, factory installed brake control in here. So if you're towing a trailer with electric trailer brakes, you'll still need to add the trailer brake control. Ladder for access to the roof. Uh, we always recommend a couple of times a season getting up on that roof and just visually inspecting your roof seals uh, make sure that you haven't uh, caught a tree branch and torn your roof membrane or uh, and just keep an eye on those uh, on that sealant make sure it doesn't need to be touched up here on the camping side you've got your outside entertainment system uh, so this TV, TV is on a swing arm and it's magnetic. So if you just pull a little harder than you think you have to, you can pull that out to access the connections on the back. There's also a spot down here for components. Uh, so you could put a, a DVD or a Blu-ray player, gaming system, um, whatever you like. Uh, down here you've got audio and HDMI inputs as well as uh, power hookups. Um, here you've got your um, vent for your fridge. Uh, so again, like several of the other uh, things, you can open this up uh, to get at the back of the fridge, but there's really nothing that you ever need to get in there for aside from the periodic cleaning and dusting. Mostly this is just a vent. Uh, the fridge needs a little airflow uh, in through here, out through the vent on the roof for that fridge to work properly. And uh, the one right below that is your furnace exhaust. Again, some serviceable components uh, in behind here that would most likely be done by us or by an RV technician. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is this uh, exhaust does get very hot when the furnace is running. So if you've got young kids around the RV, make sure they know, stay away from that. Um, right underneath here is that uh, quick connect propane connection that we talked about. That's a 12 volt or a 12 volt. That's a low pressure uh, propane line. So if you have uh, low pressure propane appliances, barbecues and the like uh, with the quick connect fitting, you can hook them up to there. And then kind of your main storage compartment right here. Uh, and you, in, you have in fact a, a low pressure barbecue right here. Um, so that will um, just hook right up to that, uh, to that um, connection and you can set it on a table or it does come with a stand uh, that can sit right on the ground or be mounted uh, to the side of the trailer, the RV. Um, another uh, storage compartment here. Uh, this one is a pass-through. Um, it's a, uh, this is what they would consider a semi-basement. 
And so if you've got things like camping mats and fishing rods and, and uh, stuff that's awkward to store in storage compartments, this is a good spot for it. This one also has a drain plug in the bottom. So if you uh, want to put some water and ice uh, and stuff in there, you can do that. And that brings us back around to the front of the motorhome. Um, I think we've pretty much covered everything outside. Uh, follow me inside and we'll take you through a few things in there. Actually, first thing we'll talk about before we even go inside is your uh, access for your batteries. You've got dual 12 volt RV batteries here. Um, so they are uh, hooked up uh, positive from the RV to positive on one battery, negative from the RV to negative on the other battery, and then the batteries uh, are hooked together positive to positive and negative to negative. With 12 volt batteries, you always hook them positive to positive, negative to negative. Had, had these been six volt batteries, you would hook them negative to positive. We also installed a solar charging system on the, uh, on the coach batteries. Uh, so it's a, a 200 watt solar charging system on the coach batteries and a 50 watt solar charging system for the engine start battery. And you've got a fuse here. Uh, this is for the solar charging system. Just inside the door, a couple of important switches. Uh, so you've got your uh, right and left um, power stabilizing jacks. So you can just press extend and retract to raise and lower those. This is not a leveling system. This is just for stability. Uh, so once you've got the RV parked and relatively close to level, you can run these down to be snug with the ground, but they're not intended to actually take up the entire weight of the RV. There is also incidentally a um, warning buzzer that will indicate if these are not fully retracted. If you start the engine of the motorhome and there's a really annoying buzzer uh, that you can't figure out why it won't shut off, this is the reason. Come here and just make sure that both of those jacks are all the way fully retracted. Um, you've also got your main uh, battery disconnect switch here. So you can uh, hit that button to kill the power to the battery. We've installed the solar charging system um, directly to the batteries. So even when this battery disconnect switch is off and the batteries are disconnected, the solar charging system will still be working, doing its job charging the batteries. You've got some switches down here uh, for your um, awning light, your step light, and for the awning itself. And this is a one touch awning. You should be able to just press the button and the awning will extend itself. Awning extends eight feet. It's gonna come all the way out and then uh, tension itself up. There is some adjustment for height uh, on the awning so you can change the height and the pitch of the awning but it's not easy to do. Uh, it's, up at the, uh, it's up at the top corners. You can adjust it with an Allen key. Uh, as a general rule though, uh, just, leave it, uh, just leave it at this height and pitch. Uh, the awning also has a wind sensor. So if it starts flapping around in the wind, uh, it'll sense that and it'll retract all by itself. Good practice to get into though. If it's a windy day or you're expecting windy conditions, don't trust that. Just, uh, just bring the awning in. Um, it's not uh, doing its job if it's flapping around anyway. So come on back inside the RV with me. And right here on the wall around the corner from the door is a lot of the control functions of the RV. Your main interior light switch for all of your ceiling lights. Uh, right above that is your uh, thermostat. This controls both your heating and cooling system. Um, so for the heating system, if we turn it over to heat and then turn the thermostat up to a temperature that we're comfortable with, 
the uh, furnace comes on right away and you'll hear that furnace motor uh, but it'll take 15 to 30 seconds before the uh, igniter goes off and it actually ignites the burner. Well, if you could hear that in the video, but now that burner uh, is going and we'll have uh, warm air blowing from our vents. Once it comes up to temperature or you shut off the, uh, the thermostat, the burner goes out immediately, but that fan is gonna continue to run for another up to another minute uh, just to go through its cycle. Um, for the cooling system, we're not plugged into power right now, so you'll need to be either plugged into power or running your generator uh, to run the air conditioning. Uh, but same thing, turn the system over to cool, set the temperature that you like. And then with the cooling system, there's actually another switch here uh, for low and high fan speed. You get two different speeds for that air conditioning fan, only one speed for the furnace fan. Um, right above that is your monitor panel. Uh, so this is where you'll find your uh, monitors for your propane level, which is completely full right now, battery level completely charged, fresh tank is completely empty, and black and gray holding tanks all completely empty. This is also where you'll find that remote uh, generator switch. So just like outside, when you go to start it, actually press and hold the stop button for a second until the red light comes on. Then you can press the start button. And there we go. And now that we're inside, we'll actually wait a few seconds for that transfer switch to kick on. You'll know when the transfer switch kicks on because your microwave will light up. That generator is gonna come up to speed though before the transfer switch kicks in. There we go. So now you can run uh, your microwave, your entertainment sy systems, your air conditioning, and all of the power outlets uh, in the RV. To shut that down, press the stop button. Always good practice to get into is to press and hold the stop button until the generator is completely shut down. Otherwise, it may, if you just touch that stop button uh, briefly, it may start to shut down, but then start back up. So. Uh, press and hold the stop button until it's completely shut down. Um, you've got uh, 12 volt tank heaters on your black and gray holding tanks. Uh, you might use those if you're camping in cooler temperature and uh, it's getting below zero overnight. You can turn on your tank heaters to keep from freezing up. And this is where you'll toggle your water pump on and off. Um, turn your water pump on and then you can pump water directly from the fresh water holding tank. The last button that's on here is the slide, extend, and retract button. So we'll go ahead and run these slides out. And if we just press and hold the extend button, the main slide will extend. This, this slide extends only about 24 inches, but it makes a big difference to the interior space in the motorhome. Uh, and then the second slide out switch is here in the back. Um, right here, if we press and hold that, the bedroom slide extends. This one extends three feet, so it's actually deeper than the main slide and then once you've got that extended you can fold down the bed just like so uh, the mattress is hinged in the center uh, sort of at knee level or just above knee level so you don't really notice that hinge uh, when you're sleeping in the bed also a good place for the ladder uh, storage is on that mattress that just keeps it from from uh, rolling around and stuff as you travel couple more switches here, uh, one for the lighting over top the bed and one for the uh, rest of the bedroom lights here. Um, your bedroom TV is not on a swing arm, uh, so this doesn't pull out like the one uh, downstairs or outside. Um, why don't we do the bathroom while we're back here? 
So here in the bathroom, a couple of things worth pointing out. This is your on-demand uh, water heater control. Uh, so it is on now and you can turn the water temperature up as high as 124 degrees Fahrenheit uh, and you can switch between uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit there. I'm just going to shut that off because we don't actually want that to start up because I don't believe uh, this RV is summerized. I think it's still winterized. I'm not certain of that though. I'll find out. Um, other things in the uh, in the bathroom. Uh, anytime you're using your RV's uh, sewer system, uh, you'll want to use a good potent RV toilet chemical. It's available in powder, liquid, or tablet form. Doesn't matter which one you use. Uh, what is important is that you uh, replace the chemical after uh, every time you dump your holding tanks. So when you when you uh, are finished dumping your holding tanks, come in here, pour some chemical into the toilet and then use the foot flush, push halfway down on the foot flush uh, to fill the bowl with water, and then the rest of the way down to dump the um, chemical into the tank. That chemical takes a little bit of water to activate it, so always make sure you put water down with the chemical. And I can see here that this is water in the toilet bowl, not antifreeze, uh, so this uh, motorhome is summarized and ready for use. The other thing that's worth pointing out here in the bathroom is there's a notable power outlet here. This is your GFI outlet, your ground fault circuit interrupter with the test and reset buttons on it, just like the ones in the bathroom of your home. But in an RV, this is wired in series with several of your other power outlets. So if you're plugged into power or you're running your generator and none of your outlets work, uh, come in here, press the reset button and that'll reset the whole circuit. that covers it in the bathroom. Working back up through the hallway, down at floor level here, you've got your power converter. Um, so this is where you'll find all of your fuses for your 12 volt circuits and all of your breakers for your 110 volt circuits. You've got a real variety of fuses here, so not a bad idea to pick up just a variety pack of fuses so that you've always got some spares on hand. Um, the other thing that this does is it works as your battery charger. So if you, uh, if your battery charger is under heavy load, if you're plugged into power and your batteries are low, this may make a bit of a humming or a buzzing sound. Perfectly normal, nothing to worry about. It's just the battery charger. And across from that is your propane carbon monoxide detector. Uh, so if you have a, a propane leak, um, you'll, uh, you'll, this will alarm to alert you of that. Um, however, if you ever had a propane leak in an RV, you would almost certainly smell the propane before the alarm started to go off. It will also alert you to uh, high carbon monoxide levels. Uh, be conscious of that if you've been running your generator a lot. Anytime there's high carbon monoxide levels in an RV, it's typically from uh, generator uh, fumes coming in through a window. Um, the third thing that this will do though, is this will alarm if you have low voltage in your RV batteries. Um, so once your batteries reach that critical low level, it'll just chirp to alert you to the low voltage. Um, chances are then all you need to do is start the motorhome or the generator to charge the batteries or plug in to shore power. You've got some uh, light switches hiding uh, under, this, uh, under this counter. Um, so if you're looking for uh, some of your uh, light switches, uh, you'll find them there. We have another one hiding over here uh, for the lights above the dinette table. Your stovetop um, is uh, uh, a gas stovetop, um, and uh, you'll just light these individually with a uh, barbecue lighter. Um, good practice to get into uh, anytime you have your propane bottle refilled. Uh, the first thing you should do is come into the RV and light both of these burners. Uh, once you can get both of those burners lit, you know you've let any air that might be in those propane lines off the system. Then your automatic appliances like your uh, fridge, furnace, and hot water system will have no trouble lighting up. Uh, we didn't cover this when we were here before. The uh, control panel for your um, 
solar system. So this just basically uh, shows you the status of your batteries in solar. Uh, right now your battery is at 100%, 13.8 volts. Um, if it were currently charging, it would show you the uh, uh, show you show you the rate of charge as well. And then your fridge, um, it's an automatic gas electric fridge. So if we turn that on and put it into automatic mode, which is what I always recommend, if the RV has 110 volt power available, i.e. if you're plugged in to power or your generator is running, the fridge will always run on electricity. Uh, if you lose power though, if you shut down your generator or you blow a breaker or something like that, it'll automatically switch over to gas and light the gas. Um, so uh, you can just always leave that in automatic. You do have the ability to override the automatic uh, to run it in gas only. Um, not a lot of situations that you would want to do that, uh, but you, you uh, might find that the fridge does cool down faster running in gas than it does in electricity. So if you're trying to cool the fridge down, uh, you can override the automatic. Um, having said that, it takes quite a long time to cool an, an absorption RV fridge. Um, so uh, uh, what we always recommend is start that fridge cooling the day before you load up if possible. That way it's reached uh, temperature by the time you load the food in. Um, moving forward uh, in the RV, you've got seat belts, uh, two forward, two seat belts in the forward facing dinette seat and two seat belts in the uh, side facing sofa, no seat belts in the rear facing dinette seat. Um, and the power bunk, uh, we also didn't show you how uh, to use, but uh, when you go to use the power bunk, make sure to pull the safety pins out uh, and likewise when you go to travel make sure to put these safety pins in uh, they just fit right into there that keeps the bunk from being able to work its way down uh, it's unlikely that it would do that uh, but it keeps it from being able to work its way down while you travel so make sure you put those in uh, before you drive uh, and make sure they're out before you lower the bunk and that's what this uh, switches for here so power bunk on and press the lower button it will actually come down a little bit lower than those seats so if you recline those seats all the way you can get an extra inch or so on the bunk I'm just gonna stop it there um, and then that's what that ladder that we found at the master bed is for it just attaches right to the bunk so again, to raise that back up, press and hold the switch. Avoid stopping this halfway. Uh, when the bunk is on its way up or on, on its way down, uh, try to always run it all the way up and down. The reason for that is it actually uses two motors. Um, and if you don't run it all the way up or all the way down, there's the potential for those motors to come out of alignment. Same goes for the slide outs. It's actually a very similar uh, system. Uh, always uh, try to run it all the way out or all the way in. If those motors ever do come out of alignment, you should be able to fix that by uh, just running it all the way down uh, and then holding your, holding your finger on the button until the motors equalize and then running it all the way up and doing the same thing. Once it's reached the top, hold your finger on the button until those motors equalize and it should adjust itself. Here in the cab, um, a couple of things to cover. Um, we have upgraded uh, the stereo system in this one uh, to a GPS version. That wasn't standard equipment on this model. Um, so to act activate your GPS, uh, just hit the map button and accept, and that will bring up the GPS map. And to get back to the uh, stereo system again you can just uh, hit the map button uh, one thing that's nice with this style of stereo is you can when you put the RV in reverse just like a modern vehicle your rear view camera will come on but you can override uh, that to always have the rear camera showing and you actually need to have 
the vehicle running for that rear camera to show. Uh, but you can drive down the highway with the rear camera running. Uh, that way, if you're towing a small trailer or a towed vehicle, uh, you can keep an eye on it from there. Um, if you just touch anywhere on the screen, that'll put you back to the, uh, to the menu. Uh, you can also um, subscribe to Sirius XM radio. There's an antenna on the roof that does require a subscription. Uh, you can sync your phone for uh, Bluetooth uh, music and there is uh, some auxiliary and USB inputs here as well. Just in there. Uh, you've also got side view cameras uh, on the motorhome, so if you activate your signal light, it will uh, bring up the side view. I see we left the door open. That would be bad if you were driving down the road and you saw that door open, you'll want to pull over. Um, the uh, side view cameras uh, will override the audio uh, signal coming from the radio, so that's a normal thing. Uh, when, and some people find it annoying, but when you're driving down the road and you activate your side view camera, uh, the radio will uh, be overridden by the, um, by the uh, video stream from the camera. Um, I spoke a little bit outside about the ability to emergency boost the battery. Uh, that's what this switch is right here. Uh, so if your engine start battery is dead, but your RV batteries are charged, you can press and hold this button, hold it, for, hold it down for a couple of seconds, and then start the engine. That effectively uses the RV batteries to boost the engine start battery. Um, your other switches here are for your cab lights, your fog lights outside. Uh, you have another generator start switch here. We won't go through the trouble of actually starting that generator again, but just like the other ones, press and hold uh, the stop button till the light comes on, then press and hold the start button. And you also have a nightshade here. Um, so this will come all the way down when the engine is not running uh, for shade and for privacy uh, when you're camping. Uh, and it will, it will come down about a third of the way to about here while you're traveling, uh, while the engine's actually running. And that's for uh, just for a sun visor, basically. One of the questions that we get asked the most when people return with their access to our service department is what is this button for? Um, this is to set the stop for the, um, for the uh, sun visor shade. So that's if you ever need to, if it loses its programming and you need to reprogram uh, where that stop stops, that's what this button is for. Um, aside from that, I'm starting to run out of things to tell you about it. Uh, over here on the uh, left hand side is where your windshield washer controls are. Uh, people are often looking for them here. Um, they're not on the uh, factory uh, switch there on their own switch down here and uh, you've got your uh, table uh, which is stored in the back uh, in the closet I never showed you that but it's there um, and the uh, table base uh, can go in here and the and you can uh, use a little uh, table here when you're camping or when you're traveling down the road and that about does it. I'm going to grab one set of keys and we'll head back outside so I can show you where those dump valves are that we missed. inside here is where you'll find your dump valves uh, so the hose will be hooked up from underneath here and then you have two valves a larger black valve and a smaller gray valve always dump the black first that's your your actual sewage holding tank uh, so once that's finished draining usually you can hear it when it finishes draining you can close that valve and open the gray valve that'll use your sink and shower water to flush that sewer content through the hose um, so that there's nothing left in that hose when you disconnect it and put it away. Um, there is a little travel 
A little travel thing there, but does it actually fit? I don't think that, I don't think this uh, traveling uh, uh, cover actually fits in place there. Um, and it's, in a lot of ways, it's, it may be best to leave that uh, open so that if there is any dripping or anything, it drips out onto the ground or the road rather than accumulating in the compartment here. Um, and we'll close that up. This white uh, key, by the way, is the key that you'll use to access any of your locking baggage doors. So that's it. Hopefully you've learned something about the Thor Motor Coach Axis 27.7 motorhome. If you have any questions, you can always uh, look us up on our website, trailblazerrv.com, or give us a call here at Trailblazer, and we'll be happy to help you through it. Thanks for watching.